Oh, if it's a humid day, the powder picks up on the moisture in the air. The muscle will go camouflage known to modern man today. I can paint my face. I can... 现在我到了乔治堡垒，这个坐落在尼亚加拉，在湖上这个小镇的旁边，走路也就几分钟的路程。今天这里应该开门，可以进去看一看这个堡垒，以及与河对岸是如何发生战争的。在乔治堡垒这个停车场呢，是需要付费的，要付费八块五。这个停车场还是非常贵的。虽然现在游客少了不少，但依然有旅游巴士来到这里。这里就是乔治堡垒的内部，这个是建于十八世纪末。在十九世纪初的时候呢，因为美国的独立战争，这里就被英国人就作为了一个非常重要的堡垒，它的防御系统的一部分。在十九世纪初的时候呢，这个地方发生过与美国的一场战争，这是。这上面的一个火炮，这里距离河对岸是有大概一千米左右的样子，这条河也就是有个四五百米宽。这是乔治堡垒，尼亚加拉河对岸，就是纽约州的一个小镇。这是乔治堡垒唯一存在的一座原始的建筑，这是十八世纪末的建筑，其他的建筑都是在战争中损毁了。I think if we were to do that to another person, I think it would be considered quite rude, or like problematic. If I said what? If, I said, if, I said, if you if you applied the same logic to、oh. a person. Hello. Hey, hey. How are you doing today? It's good. Good. What's your mate? I'm making some icing. Oh. I'm trying. See, that's the big thing. <laughs> we'll see how it turns out. Oh. This is the jail. Yoyi美国想从英国人的手中夺走尼亚加拉半岛，于1812年的夏天，美国的7000多名的军队越过尼亚加拉河，将1000多名英国的守军击溃，经过数月的反复争夺，最终将美国的军队推回到了尼亚
在与美国发生战争以后，民众所损失的物品的价值。So I'm going to fire twice. The first round of the load and fire be a ceremonial loading and firing away talking. Do the 13 steps that it takes to load and fire the musket. The second round to be a rapid fire, so to speak, where I try and get this thing to go off as quickly as possible.、Uh, so I'll talk you through all the steps of the, the, the、uh, loading the round the first time. The second time I fire, it'll be as if I've been told to prime load and give fire as quickly as possible to show you that yeah, you can fire these things rather rapidly. <laughs> no pressure. With blank cartridge, prime and load. So you move the musket to the right-hand side of the body, open the prism to expose the pan. The next order is handle cartridge. Reach back, grab onto a cartridge, <laughs> bite off the top. <laughs> prime. Pour some of the gunpowder in the pan. Close the prism to hold that gunpowder tight. Cast about. Now the rest of the powder, the paper, and the ball, if there was one, would now go down the barrel. The rammer is used to seat that cartridge at the bottom. And I cannot stress how important it is to put the ramrod back. I mean, don't get me wrong. Some people think that's an excellent projectile. I、uh, I don't disagree. I I just think it's an awkward projectile. Well, the awkward part is going across the field and asking for it back. So they tell you in the manual, tap it. Be sure you put it back. Leaving it in the barrel, good chance you're going to create a shish kebab on the other side. Hey, ready? Present. Bar. Bang. Okay. Well, I wanted to show you what a misfire looks like.、And、there's many reasons why the musket might not go off, including on a windy day, the spark can get blown away from the pan. The musket won't go off. If it's a humid day, the powder can pick up on the moisture in the air. The musket won't go off. I'm going to actually knock a few pieces of flint off my flint in, ho in hopes that I can leave a sharp edge behind and perhaps get a few sparks going in here. On the 27th of, A,、uh, of April, or 27th of May, 2013, 6,000 Americans arrived here. Imagine a thousand going on. Napoleon marched to Moscow in 1812 with half a million men. Imagine 10,000 going on. You create what became popularly called the fog of war, where it cannot, where it gets so smoky you can't tell the difference between the good guys and the bad guys. And frankly, that's kind of important. Friendly fire is not a new concept. You don't want to be shooting at your own guys. So yeah, the British are famous for standing there in the bright red suits with, as we call them, the "Shoot me here" cross belts and tall black hats. <laughs> well, the Americans are standing on the other side of the battlefield, all dressed up in bright blue suits with the "Shoot me here" cross belts and tall black hats. The Hessians, the Prussians, the Spaniards, the French, the Swiss, the Dutch, the Portuguese. Every modern army wears bright clothing if they can afford it. We always identify ourselves on battlefields. We still do. Yes, our soldiers get dressed up in camouflage, but you put a flag right there, or right there, and right there. Camouflage the tank, paint a flag on it. Camouflage the airplanes, paint flags on them. We've always identified what side we're fighting on. You have to wear the belts because it holds on to your stuff. Later on in warfare, it's referred to as webbing. You've got all your ammunition on the one side and your bayonet on the other. The choice for the tall black hat. Well, it's the most fashionable thing to wear. But they're standing in long lines, blazing away at each other because everyone's using the height of technology, the musket. So my weapon is now safe. If you'd like to come forward and have a closer look at it, I am available for birthdays and bar mitzvahs. <laughs> If you do have any questions, I can stick around for a little while. But thank you very much for your attention. Enjoy the rest of your day. Thank you. This video is over.